The following is a Michigan sesquicentennial year presentation. Last winter, oftentimes you could drive throughout the North Country and see scenes like this. White-tailed deer along the road, browsing, looking for food. They were hungry. They were stressed, nibbling anything they can get. Understanding the winter food situation is important to learn if you're going to know about deer management and what's going to happen in the future so we can predict the deer herd. Right now, it looks pretty darn good. We're going to talk about deer nutrition, what they're eating, so stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. It's Thursday night. Time for Michigan Outdoors. From in the north is not always kind to the white-tailed deer. Snow covers the ground, makes it difficult to walk, which burns up energy. Snow also covers up much of their food, what little there is once the plants lose their leaves and become dormant. When the snow comes, the deer move into yards, which are usually cedar swamps where they find protection from the wind and some food is available. In the little town of Hulbert, near Taquamanan Falls, Lloyd Campbell has a small, modern apartment building, the only one in town, and he built a deer viewing room off the downstairs lobby. Each winter, the deer, along with a local flock of turkeys, come from the nearby deer yard and eat the handouts that Lloyd provides. Every day, during the middle of winter, spectators come from miles around to watch the deer and the turkeys. Now, this provides a lot of enjoyment to a lot of people, but it's at the deer's expense. These deer are not seen throughout the rest of the year. They're not tame, they're wild. But the reason they come in for food so near people is because they're hungry. The deer you're looking at right now, the ones waiting for Lloyd to put the food out, aren't just hungry. These are the deer that are literally starving. Now, they're not on their last leg, but they're the ones that are hurting the most. These deer are the smaller ones, the young of the year, the fawns the ones that are run off of the food piles by the bigger deer, the more healthy deer, when they come in to eat. It takes starving deer to lose their fear of man or of any meat-eating animal. Their quest for survival is so strong that they know if they don't get food soon, their strength, which is already down, will soon be gone. So the weakest deer follow Lloyd, getting the corn before the bigger deer, the bullies of the deer yard, come in to take over. What's the matter with the food, the twigs and branches out in the deer yards? Well, research has shown that the protein content in the food that deer find in the winter is down 25 to 40 percent. Now that happens as the plants become dormant, so a pound of winter plants doesn't have the protein content that the summer food does. But what makes it even more difficult for deer is the digestibility. In the summer, a deer can digest about 70 percent of the plant material it eats, and in August, the digestibility drops to 45 or 50 percent, and by midwinter, it dips to as low as 12 percent. This means that during yarding, deer digest only a small fraction of what they eat, and the protein content of that small amount is far less than they get when they eat the same plants when they're green. And when you come to Wildlife Acres, which is what Lloyd Campbell calls his backyard deer yard, You'll see the deer and the turkeys eating at tabletop level. Now, that's something that these critters don't find in the woods. Most of their food they either have to paw for or reach for. Now, they don't mind reaching for food. I mean, they'll even take it from a bird feeder. For, for most warm-blooded animals, now whether it's turkeys or human beings, our metabolism increases the colder we get. Our bodies speed up, require more food to keep us warm the way a furnace thermostat reacts to a draft, but not with deer. Their metabolism goes down as the temperature drops below freezing. They move less. They bed down most of the time. They don't move at night. Their feeding is almost all done during the day. And during storms, they'll stay in their beds for days at a time without looking for food. Did you see what just happened there? That deer was literally kicked off its dinner table. A bigger, more aggressive, probably healthier deer wanted it out of the way, wanted to save that food for itself. Now, you don't see a lot of fighting right after the food with the hay and the corn has been put out. They're all busy eating. But after a while, especially as the corn is eaten up, the fighting begins. Now, see those white marks, the scars on that deer's head? That's a buck, and those marks are where its antlers were. It isn't necessarily the bucks that fight, either. Those do, too.
These fights aren't playful. They're serious. Watch this in slow motion. I'll back it up and see if it doesn't remind you of prize fighters. They posture. They fake moves. They intimidate. Now they're trying to drive each other off by acting tough. And if that doesn't work, the dominant one will strike. These blows with their sharp hooves are serious, and I'm sure they hurt. I mean, the hair flies. In slow motion, you can see the kick to the upper ribs knock chunks of hair to the ground, and that's all that's needed to drive the weaker deer away. It moves off and contemplates where it can go, what feed pile it can move to without starting another fight. And you don't think these fights are serious, that they take energy, increase the pulse of the deer? The one that was driven away is hyperventilating, an indication of stress. Deer under stress, especially hunger in the winter, aren't kind to each other. They don't want to share. They don't want to let their weaker brothers and sisters eat the limited food that's available. And when they fight, they often stake out a territory. Now watch them clear the space out around themselves. Not just enough room to eat but they try to drive the other deer clear off of the whole food pile. Now you might call it greed, deer call it survival of the fittest. Where is this place? This Wildlife Acres, it's in Hulbert. There's no admission charge. You can walk right into the downstairs of the small apartment building. And when the deer are there, Lloyd Campbell is feeding them. You might see as many as a hundred or more winter whitetails. So far this winter, however, the deer are not yarded. They haven't shown up yet. Now, it's a real dilemma for deer lovers at Hulbert. When you don't see the deer at Hulbert, you know they're healthy, and that's good. If you want to see them, though, you know that they're starting to starve. That's a classic winter dilemma of people who enjoy seeing white-tailed deer in Michigan outdoors.